Hello, everyone. Welcome to the serial lectures on traditional Chinese culture. Today, we will take up the subject of TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine is mainly concerned with physiology, pathology, disease prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. Pathology is the study of the cause, nature, and effect of disease. TCM is an integral part of Chinese culture, a rich treasure house, and the national quintessence of China. It has made great contributions to the health and well-being of Chinese people. Today, both TCM and Western medicine are used in providing medical services in China. TCM practices are common and well accepted throughout East Asia, but are considered alternative in the West. Shall we probe into the history of traditional Chinese medicine and pharmacology? The earliest records of illnesses, medicines, and treatments were found 3,000 years ago. They were inscribed on oracle bones. The history of traditional Chinese medicine and pharmacology can be summarized by a list of important doctors and books. There come forth many brilliant doctors and pharmacologists. The legends of these historical figures are most inspiring. Chinese medicine doctors traveled around on foot, carrying a banner or a flag painted with the Tai Chi diagram. They had a very low social status. Later, in the Song Dynasty, China instituted a national standard for apothecaries. The experience of traditional doctors has been handed down mainly through medical literature, mostly dealing with clinical medicine and some dealing with preventive medicine. There are four representative medical classics. Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine is the earliest existing Chinese medical masterpiece, providing the theoretical basis for Chinese medicine. Classic on 81 Medical Problems was written by Bian Chue, mainly concerned with theoretical problems. Treatise on febrile and miscellaneous disease was written by Zhang Zhongji. Treatise is the thesis. Febrile is the typhoid or the fever. 
herbal classic of Shen Nong is the earliest pharmacopoeia ever found in China. We may probe into the unknown origin of TCM and begin with the three legendary figures Fu Xi, Shen Nong, and the Yellow Emperor. Chinese people claim to be the descendants of Yan Di and Huang Di. Yan Di refers to Shen Nong. Huang Di means Yellow Emperor. There come forth many brilliant traditional doctors and pharmacologists. Here, I'd like to introduce nine representative historical figures. The mythical figure Fu Xi lived about 6,000 years ago. Fu Xi is ascribed the creator of Ba Gua, eight trigrams, on which Yin and Yang theory was based. Here we can see the earlier heaven eight trigrams or innate eight trigrams. It is said that when Fu Xi was taking a walk on the riverbank, he saw a turtle floating onto the water surface. He was enlightened by the pattern on the turtle back and created eight trigrams. Shen Nong had tested herbs personally. Traditional Chinese medicine originated with Shen Nong, the patron of agriculture. He was a celebrated herbal master and ancestor of agriculture, who lived about 6,000 years ago. Shen Nong is said to have personally tasted hundreds of grass and herbs, including toxic and poisonous plants. He tested their properties, trying to find potential medicines. Legend has it that Shen Nong had a transparent body and thus could see the effects of different plants and herbs on himself. Herbal classic of Shen Nong was not written by himself. It was finished later. Still, prior to the Qing dynasty. It is the earliest pharmacopoeia ever found in China, the oldest extant monograph on oriental herbal medicine or pharmacology. Chinese people claim to be descendants of Yan Di and Huang Di. Shen Nong is known as Yan Di, and Yellow Emperor is Huang Di. Yellow Emperor's classic of internal medicine was not written by himself either. It was finished later. However, it is the earliest classic of TCM passed on to the present.
Huang Di is said to have invented the needles used for acupuncture. Here's the earliest ancestor of acupuncture and moxibustion. Now I'd like to introduce nine brilliant historical figures. Bian Chu was a highly skilled doctor of the Warring States period. He created the four diagnostic methods, and he was the mediator of pulse science. A network of twelve channels, fifteen collaterals, and eight extraordinary channels spreads throughout the body and links various points. It is said that the classic on eighty-one medical problems was written by Bian Chu. Zhang Zhongjing was the herbalist saint, a great physician of the Eastern Han Dynasty. He wrote the medical monograph, Treatise on Febrile and Miscellaneous Disease. Febrile is the typhoid or cold. Here is the great book, Treatise on Febrile and Miscellaneous Disease. Another prominent surgeon of the Eastern Han Dynasty was Hua Tuo. He is the earliest ancestor of surgery, famous for surgical operation. He used a kind of narcotic made of herbs during surgery. Narcotic is the anesthetic, which can stop people from feeling pain. He was also pro he was also proficient in acupuncture and moxibustion. Hua Tuo created a body building exercise. Called Five Animal Frolics, based on the movements of tiger, deer, bear, ape, and crane. Ge Hong was the mediator of preventive medicine, born in the Eastern Jin Dynasty. His theory contains the embryonic idea, the primitive idea of immunity. He was both a physician and a Taoist. He put forward the theory of external and internal work, which is still in use today. Sun Simiao was the king of medicine of the Tang Dynasty. He wrote the golden prescriptions for emergencies and supplement to the golden prescriptions, which was the earliest clinical medicine encyclopedia in China. It is the prescription that cures disease in TCM.
Qian Yi was the earliest ancestor of pediatrics of the Northern Song dynasty. He was the author of the first monograph of pediatrics, Therapeutic Key to Children's Disease. Song Fu was the earliest ancestor of medical jurisprudence of the Southern Song Dynasty. He wrote the book Record of Redressing Mishandled Cases, in which he put forward the method of identifying direct relative through blood. To redress is to correct, rectify, or put right. Identifying, correct, identifying direct relative through blood was a great idea at that time. Li Shizhen was the great pharmacologist of the Ming Dynasty. Here, Li Shizhen was feeling the pulse of a female patient. Only the left arm is out of the mosquito net. At that time, women should be separated from men. Li Shizhen's monumental masterpiece, Compendium of Materia Medica, includes a large number of medicinal substances, prescriptions, and illustrations. It is a great pharmacopoeia completed in 1578 and it is the most complete and comprehensive pre-modern herbal book, serving as the basis of modern TCM. And here is the pharmacopoeia, Compendium of Materia Medica. Wu Qian was the imperial physician of the Qing dynasty. He was in charge of the compilation of the Golden Mirror of Medical Tradition. Golden Mirror of Medical Tradition was compiled under imperial commission in the Qing dynasty. Now, shall we come to the major theories of TCM? Traditional Chinese medicine is based on the following five theories. Yin and Yang theory. Theory of five elements. Metal, wood, water, fire, and earth. Qi, blood and body fluid. Qi is the airflow, vital energy or vitality. Channels and collaterals. Channels are the meridians. Collaterals are the branches. Viscera. Viscera are the internal organs. Yin and the Yang theory comes first. Here we can see the Tai Chi diagram, the two fish, based on the negative and the positive theory. 
the outer circle itself represents a whole, namely everything in the universe. Tai Chi is the supreme ultimate. It is the source of all things in the universe. White fish represents yang elements and is generally depicted as rising on the left. Black fish represents yin elements and is shown descending on the right. There is a small dot of the different color at the fullest point, indicating how each will transform into the other. Yin and Yang function by reciprocal action. Yin and Yang are mutually rooted. They mutually wax and wane and mutually transform. Yin and Yang are two polar opposites into which all things can be classified. Thus, dark and light, life and death, male and female, good and evil, strong and weak are all manifestations of Yin and Yang. Chinese medicine is mainly focused on the balance of yin and yang with respect to qi, blood, and bodily fluids. Qi is the breath, life force, or vital energy. Yin and yang theory can be applied in diagnosis, and treatment. In terms of diagnosis, disease is basically caused by the imbalance of yin and yang. Is it a yin syndrome or yang syndrome? With regard to treatment, a doctor is expected to regulate yin and yang to restore its relative balance. In terms of the human body, the exterior is positive, like the skin and the hair. The interior is negative including the internal organ, blood vessel, and bone. The back is positive, and the abdomen is negative. In the five viscera, heart and the liver are positive. Spleen, lungs, and kidneys are negative. Next comes the theory of five elements. The five elements are the five substances of the universe. They are used to describe interaction and relationship between phenomena. The five elements move and change constantly, perpetually promoting and restraining, just like the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, nothing can stay still. You cannot step twice into the same river. Here, the black arrowheads form a circle, indicating the generating interaction. Wood feeds fire. Fire creates earth. 
Earth bears metal. Metal carries water. Water nourishes wood. The generating cycle forms a circle. The round circle is symbolic of peace and harmony. A full moon is symbolic of family reunion. The white arrowheads form a star, indicating the overcoming interaction. Wood parts earth. Earth absorbs water. Water quenches fire. Fire melts metal. Metal chops wood. The overcoming cycle forms a star. The star is symbolic of combat, conflict, struggle, and fight. The Pentagon in the U.S. is the building of the Ministry of National Defense. The five elements coordinate with five colors. Wood sprouts, grows, and ascends, being green and positive. Fire is hot, warm, and bright, being red and the most positive. Earth bears, breathes, and carries everything in the universe, being yellow and negative. Metal is stern, chilly, astringent, and convergent, being white and negative. Water is cold, nourishing, and dark, being black and the most negative. As we know, the five elements are used to explain the whole physical world. Five elements are also indispensable materials in human life. They are used in TCM to explain physiological and pathological changes in human body. The word pathological means relating to illness. Next comes the theory of qi, blood, and body fluid. Qi, blood, and body fluid are the basic substances for maintaining life activities. Ancient philosophers believe that qi is the most essential substance making up the world. Everything in the universe is generated by the motion and a change of qi. Practitioners believe that qi is the essential substance constituting the human body, known as life force, vital energy. The cause of sickness is the in balance, and the blockage of qi. And the purpose of medicine is to correct the imbalance of qi, remove the blockage, and establish the balance of qi. If the balance of qi is established, how can disease attack you? Blood nourishes 
and moisturizes the whole body. Qi and blood are often used together in TCM. Body fluids are also basic substances constituting the body, including normal liquids in the body, such as gastric juice, kidney essence, semen, intestinal juice, nasal discharges, and tears. The theory of channels and collaterals is rather unique. Channels are the meridians. Collaterals are the branches. TCM has a unique model of the body, the meridian system. A network of 12 channels, 15 collaterals, and eight extraordinary channels spread throughout the body and links various points. The eight extraordinary channels include Ren channel in the front, Du channel in the back, and the Dai channel around the waist. A Tai Chi practitioner is expected to put the tongue tip at the back of the upper teeth. This is to build an immortal bridge connecting the Ren channel in the front and the Du channel in the back. Dai channel is just like a waistband. Dai channel massage can help people lose weight and keep slim and slender. Qi is running in the channels. Unlike nerves and blood vessels, channels are invisible. We cannot see the channels. We cannot touch them. Can we see the wind? We cannot see the wind, but wind does exist. We can feel the wind. Here is the chart of channels and collaterals. The vertically distributed trunk lines are described as channels, while the large and small branches are referred to as collaterals. The points forming the network were discovered one by one during the long history. Viscera are the internal organs, including five viscera and six hollow organs. Five viscera refer to liver, heart, spleen, lungs, and kidneys. Six hollow organs refer to gall, stomach, large intestine, small intestine, bladder, and cavities. The five viscera coordinate with five elements. Liver is associated with wood being green. It is also connected with gall. Liver is positive. Heart is associated with fire being red. 
It is also connected with small intestine. Heart is positive. Spleen is associated with earth being yellow. It is also connected with stomach. Spleen is negative. Lungs are associated with metal being white. They are also connected with large intestine. Lungs are negative. Kidneys are associated with water being black. They are also connected with bladder. Kidneys are negative. So heart and liver are positive. Spleen, lungs, and kidneys are negative. However, as a whole, five viscera are negative. Six hollow organs are positive. Now, shall we move on to the basic principles of TCM? There are two basic principles of TCM embodying the complete harmony between man and nature. Holistic view, or the concept of holism. Treatment based on syndrome differentiation. Holistic view is the concept of holism. Unlike Western anatomical model, which divides the physical body into parts, traditional Chinese medicine is very holistic. TCM is largely based on the philosophical concept that the human body is a small universe, is a small miniature universe with a set of sophisticated interconnected systems. And that those systems work in balance to maintain the healthy function of the human body. Human body is regarded as an aggregation of essence, energy, and spirit. The unity, the integrity of essence, energy, and spirit. TCM is more concerned with the function of entities which regulate digestion, breathing, aging, etc. Every viscous, every organ or tissue has its own function, which is a component of the general function. Health is perceived as harmonious interaction of these entities while disease is interpreted as a disharmony in interaction. Thus, disease is caused by the weakening of the body as a whole. TCM cures disease by reinforcing and stimulating the internal strengths. TCM may take a longer time to cure a disease, but it strengthens the overall health of a patient. Western medicine is based on the theory that disease is caused by bacterial or other external means 
while TCM believes that disease is basically caused by the imbalance of body. Western medicine cures disease by using external forces. TCM, on the other hand, attempts to reinforce and stimulate the body's internal strengths. Another essential principle in TCM is to treat disease based on different syndrome. Syndrome refers to a group of complex symptoms or conditions. Different syndromes in one disease should be treated differently, while different diseases as long as they have the same syndrome, can be treated similarly. The treatment is to balance the eight principal syndromes. Shall we try to differentiate the eight principal syndromes? Differentiation of yin and yang syndrome is the general principle of the other six syndromes. Yin syndromes include interior, cold, and deficiency conditions. Yang syndromes include exterior, heat, and access conditions. Differentiation of exterior and interior syndrome is used to locate the disease. Exterior syndromes are located in the skin and the hair. Interior syndromes refer to disorders in the internal organ, blood vessel, and bone. Syndrome differentiation of cold and heat, underactivity and overactivity, helps to identify the specific nature of a disease. Cold syndrome is the insufficient yang. Heat syndrome, hyperfunction of yang due to yin deficiency. Underactivity syndrome, both yin and yang are insufficient. Overactivity syndrome, both yin and yang are excessive. Here we have got a metaphor. To boil the water, we have water in the kettle and a flame in the stove. If the water level is moderate and the flame is also moderate, everything is going well and the man is healthy. If there is too much water, and the flame is too low, there appears the syndrome of cold, which is negative. If there is too little water and the flame is too high, there appears the syndrome of heat, which is positive. If there is too little water, and the flame is too low, there appears the syndrome of underactivity. The man is lacking in vitality, lacking in vital energy, and he may possibly die. If there is too much water and the flame is too high, 
there appears the syndrome of overactivity. The doctor is expected to balance the yin and the yang, the negative and the positive, as a whole. Now, shall we work on the four methods of diagnosis? The nature of a patient's disease is determined by the four methods of diagnosis, which is a complete observational system. Herbalists use a combination of four diagnostic methods inspection with eyes, auscultation and olfaction, auscultation with ears, and olfaction with nose. Inquiry with mouth, pulse taking and palpation, touch with hand. Inspection, observing the overall way the patient looks, mental state, complexion. Facial expression, tongue, fingers, and nails. Observe the color of tongue coating. Tongue coating is a layer of fur-like substance. Auscultation and olfaction. Hearing and smelling. Listening to voice, breathing, and coughing. Smelling the body and its excretions. Observing any odor. Excretions are the discharges. Odor refers to unpleasant smell not aromatic. Inquiry. Inquiring about the patient's case history, asking about background. Pulse taking and palpation. Feeling the patient's pulse and reading the pulse. This is the critical step by touch. Left hand pulse corresponds to heart, liver, and left kidney. Right hand pulse corresponds to lungs, spleen, and right kidney. Now let's proceed to the treatment. The treatment is to balance the eight principal syndromes. There are several methods of treatment, including herbal medicine, acupuncture and moxibustion, massage, cupping, Scraping, diet therapy or food therapy, medical qi gong, meditation, exercise therapy like tai chi and other martial arts. Herbal medicine is the oldest form of Chinese medicine used to counteract excessive cold, heat, 
dampness or dryness, and restore balance of body and spirit, rather than just to treat one particular disease. Each ingredient has unique characteristic. The ingredients work in harmony to balance yin and yang. Western medicine is chemical compound, while traditional Chinese medicine is natural. Western drug. Works quickly, but it has more side effects. Traditional Chinese medicine will take more time to work, but it has less side effects. It is the element that cures disease in Western medicine. But in traditional Chinese medicine, it is the prescription that works. It is the prescription that cures disease. For example, when we get a high fever, Western doctor will give us some pills which contain paracetamol, the element. But the traditional Chinese doctor may suggest ginger soup with brown sugar. Some Chinese herbs can be purchased in the U.S. Herbal medicine falls into four types: plant, animal. Mineral and fungi. Plant such as ginseng, chrysanthemum, and lotus seed. Animal like the seahorse. Mineral like realga and arsenic. In Dragon Boat Festival. It is a popular practice to drink realga wine. Realga wine is the Chinese liquor seasoned with realga. Ancient Chinese believed realga was an antidote for all poisons, and therefore can kill insects and drive away evil spirits. Fungi, for example, worm grass, is the Chinese caterpillar fungus. As the name suggests, Chinese caterpillar fungus is a worm in winter, while in summer it becomes a grass. As to the properties of drugs, there are four characteristics: cold, cool, warm, and hot. Mulberry leaves are cold. Chrysanthemum is cool. Ginseng is warm. Ginger is hot. Drugs have five tastes: hot, sour, sweet, bitter, and salty. Astringent is attached to sour. Bland or mild or light is attached to sweet. Five tastes coordinate with five. Elements. Hot is associated with metal. Hot drugs are used to disperse, diffuse, 
and activate, like onion, ginger, and garlic. Here we just take some familiar food, for example, sour and astringent are associated with wood. Sour drugs are used to stop, restrain, and estrange, such as lemon, apricot, and plum. Sweet and bland are associated with earth. Sweet drugs are used to alleviate, nourish, and strengthen, being tonic, such as honey, potato, date, and rice. Bitter is associated with fire. Bitter drugs are used to harden, dry. And discharge, such as bitter melon and wheat. Salty is associated with water. Salty drugs are used to soften and dredge, like seafood. The forms of Chinese medicine are becoming more and more convenient. Originally, herbal medicine required the patient to boil up medicinal plants and drink the resultant liquid, which is bitter and disgusting. Nowadays, herbal medicine is more commonly administered in the convenient form of pills or powders that can be dissolved in water. Traditionally, Chinese medicines have been prepared in the forms of Drink, syrup, peel, powder, palate, tincture, lump, gelatin. Here is the low quality syrup for cough. Tincture is the fluid prepared with alcohol and drugs. Gelatin is jelly. Now Chinese medicines are also prepared in the new forms of injection, tablet, solvent, capsule, and spray. Here is the spray for treating traumatic injuries or bruises. There are four nationally famous Chinese pharmaceutical works: Tong Ren Tang in Beijing, Da Ren Tang in Tianjin. Hu Qing Yu Tang in Hangzhou, Lei Yun Shang Tang in Suzhou. Here are their logos. Acupuncture and moxibustion is a profound science. For thousands of years, acupuncture. And moxibustion have been two distinct therapeutic approaches. They cure inner diseases from outside, which is rather unique. They promote the circulation of qi 
the circulation of airflow and the blood in the channels by stimulating the key points of the body. They are often used together, leading to therapeutic and preventive results with little or no side effects. The locations where needles are inserted or where heat is applied are known as points. By focusing on specific points, different effects or reactions can be produced in corresponding parts of the body. Shall we try to locate some important points in the chart? Number two, 人中. If one faints and loses consciousness, you just press this point and he will regain consciousness. Number 17, 老公. Make a fist and you can locate Lao Gong at the tip of the middle finger. Pressing this point can strengthen the heart. Number 22, Zhu San Li is good for digestion. We can locate it in the outside of lower leg. Four horizontal fingers below the hole in the knee. We can also find Bai Hui on the top and number 72, Yong Quan in the sole. Bai Hui is connected with the heaven. Yong Quan in the sole is connected with the earth. Besides, there is one point which is very good for women called San Yin Jiao. It is located four horizontal fingers above the protruding bone in the ankle, in the inside of the lower leg. Acupuncture has been used as a therapeutic method in China for over 2,000 years. It is based on the concept that the vital energy qi moves in channels throughout the body. Based on the traditional diagnosis, the doctor can find the pathogeny. Pathogeny is the cause of illness. Determine the channel and the viscous and prescribe the corresponding acupuncture to dredge channels and regulate vigor and sap. Acupuncture treats disease by puncturing specific points of the body with different types of fine needles. Acupuncture needles are hair thin and are inserted either by hand or electricity. Contrary to what you might think, Patients usually feel little or no pain. Moxibustion applies heat produced by ignited moxa over specific points of the body. It is traditionally used to treat cold. Remove dampness and humidity, strengthen 
blood circulation and airflow. In Western medicine, it is used to turn breech baby to normal position for childbirth. Breech baby refers to baby in abnormal position. Here, the herbalist is holding a strip of ignited moxa. Some moxa sticks are smokeless. Auricular therapy, ear acupuncture, is based on the idea that the ear is a microsystem of the entire body. Ailments of the entire body are treatable by stimulating the corresponding points in the ear. Ear acupuncture can be used to treat headache, nearsightedness, and many other diseases. Here are the acupuncture points in the ear. Chinese massage is known as Tui Na, using wave-like motions to loosen joints, release tight tissues, and nourish muscles. It can stimulate the flow of qi, blood, and body fluids, and can be used to treat pain, stress, or indigestion. Chinese massage is highly relaxing and invigorating. There is a Chinese movie called Tui Na. Cupping is a traditional Chinese therapy. Several glass cups are applied to specific areas of the body. Usually, the doctor ignites an alcohol sponge and puts it inside the cup for a short while, making the cup a vacuum one. Then places the vacuum cup instantly over the selected spot. As a result, the vacuum cup is sucked firmly onto the skin. It is a congested treatment, mainly used to alleviate chronic pain caused by stagnation. Scraping is called Gua Sha in Chinese. It is a form of mechanical dermabrasion using a handheld scraper to irritate and inflame various dermal areas of channels and collaterals. The skin on the back, limbs, and other parts of the body is lubricated and then scraped with a rounded object. The method produces small red pitaki, small red spots, which can remove blood stagnation, promote blood circulation and metabolism release pain and expel toxicant. It has a quick and obvious effect. The skin on the back is lubricated with essential oil like lavender, 
or rose essential oil and then scraped with a scraper. The scraper is a rounded object. It can be made of ceramic, jade, ox horn. There is a movie called Gua Sha concerning the cultural differences between China and the U.S. The kid had caught a cold. The grandfather treated him with the traditional scraping. The police saw the pitaki, saw the red spots on the back of the kid, and thought the grandson was maltreated, thus causing a lawsuit. Diet therapy or food therapy is the preparation of medicinal dishes combining selected food and superior herbs. It is believed to prevent climate-related ailments, fight early symptoms of diseases, assist primary treatment, combat adverse side effects of harsh drugs, and regain vitality after sickness. Some foods are also dropped, such as ginger, date, lotus seed, chrysanthemum, ginkgo, and mulberry leaves. Medical qigong is also a kind of treatment. Qigong has a long history of more than 3,000 years. It is one of the legacies in the treasure house of traditional Chinese medicine. Qigong is the breathing exercise, exhaling waste qi, inhaling fresh qi, and preserving the vital energy. The Qigong practitioner regulates the physical body, breathing, and mind. Qigong is often used to treat diseases. Qigong can be classified into soft Qigong and hard Qigong. Soft Qigong includes health-protecting Qigong and therapeutic Qigong. Most people practice soft Qigong. Hard Qigong is also called tough Qigong, Kung Fu Qigong, or martial arts Qigong. There is also emitting qigong, which is incredible. Emitting qigong is performed by a qigong master to treat a patient or attack an opponent at a distance. Qigong can also be classified into static qigong and dynamic qigong. As to static qigong, people sit or stand while breathing. Static outside and dynamic inside. There is motion in stillness. In terms of dynamic qigong, people move while breathing. Dynamic outside and static inside, seeking stillness in motion. 
Qi Gong can help people keep fit and healthy in both mind and body. It is becoming part of the daily life of millions of Chinese people. Meditation focuses on one thing, such as breathing, while clearing all other thoughts from the mind. Empty the emotional trash. Meditation is used to replenish airflow, which helps to ward off illnesses. Inhale fully to take in fresh air, and exhale slowly to expel the air completely. Relax thoroughly. Close your eyes and consciously focus on a certain body part, usually starting with your toe. Concentrate on the toe and perceive the pulse beat there. Receive warm feelings from the toe and thoroughly nourish the tight muscle. Shift your attention to the whole foot and repeat the relaxation steps. Then relax body parts sequentially from bottom to top, foot, calf, knee, thigh, hip, abdomen, chest, back, shoulder, arm, palm, finger, neck, face, ear, and head. Scan the whole body. One by one, and relax them. After gently bathing each part with qi, you may relieve stress, being tranquil and peaceful, thus keeping fit and healthy. Exercise therapy includes Tai Chi and other martial arts. People practice Tai Chi to promote well-being, both mentally and physically. Tai Chi can improve the circulation of blood and vitality throughout the body and adjust the neural, respiratory. Digestive, coronary, brain, and circulatory systems of the human body. Tai Chi draws the elegant circles of life, turning the exterior circles of energy into the interior circles of energy. Once the interior circles of energy is established, how can disease attach you? Thank you very much.